What up my freaks, Ruinous and Psych here with part 7 of my Total War Warhammer 2 modded Vlad von Karstein campaign. So as we saw last time, Vlad returned to the mountains and uh, we are now going after freaking bloody spears who decided to declare war on us along with various other dwarven factions. This kind of screwed them. Uh, they tried to attack Zilfbar, we destroyed their army there and now we're going to take Grand Peak away from them and I really don't see them succeeding in this sort of defense. Other than that, we are still sacking the heck out of uh, Clan Farrakh here and uh, gaining free levels and all that good stuff out of that, but most importantly, the Empire has now decided to declare war on us, although not the main Empire, only Ostermark, uh, but it's still an issue. It's still an issue because if they go for Eshin, we can't really defend it, but then I suppose Isabella will kill them in the field. I guess we'll find out whether that happens next turn. Other than that, there's not much to do here, I think. Uh... Kind of tempted to join a couple of these zombie units together, to be perfectly honest, because we can always just get more zombies. Do we really need that many zombies? Hmm. I mean, we are going to keep sacking this. Oh, I do want another corpse card as well, but you know what? We'll have to deal with that next turn anyway, because you, uh, Katrina, you can't move until next turn anyway. So, we'll see. We'll see. Okay, you go there next turn. You guys, what do you have here? Ooh, wait. Hmm. Yes. We'd have to summon the corpse cart here. Yeah, that's fine. We can summon it here before we move. Alrighty, and let's get into Grand Peak pretty much immediately. I mean, there's not much else to do right before the battle, though. I do want to do one thing, and that is to get the next... Uh, to use our next Blood Kiss to re-up uh, re fine metalwork, essentially. Uh, so that the uh, uh, that the dwarfs don't get angry at us. Plus, we'll get another uh, unique follower out of it, so that's pretty useful. Uh, there we go. Dwarf Spy, Construction Time, and uh, Construction Cost for All Buildings. I guess that it'll give this one to Isabella, at least for now. We'll probably uh, switch it around. Wait, what? Oh, we don't have the mission complete. Okay, we will have the mission complete after we attack this, and let's attack this immediately then. Alright, it says Pyrrhic Victory, but I think we're just going to see just the regular old-fashioned way. I mean, I feel like we don't even need to do a cinematic battle, because we've seen like a dozen of the- well, not a dozen, but uh, a bunch of these sieges already, and they all go the same way. The Vargais kill like half the entire enemy force, uh, so I think we can just do this the old-fashioned way, so let's do it. We can watch the Vargas do their thing regardless. Nobody on top of the walls can stand against them anyway. They're pretty hilariously effective. And then I guess we'll just uh, we'll send a bunch of zombies up the walls. Uh, so, okay, let's set up like this. You guys are going to be group two. Let's Vanguard deploy and move through here. Uh, let's set up the rest of the army about here here. Uh, I don't believe the walls should be high enough level for that to matter either, so let's get you guys behind you. Let's get Vlad up here. Uh, Bat Hulk and, well, I guess you guys can all be part of group one. There we go. You guys can all tear down the gate, then you guys can just go right here. There we go. Good enough for me. Start deployment, start battle. Let's get to it. Uh, Vargas, go in. And in fact, oh, none of these towers are active. Okay, fine. Go over here and just land on these, uh, land on these Orc Error Boys, I guess. Ooh, is that a lord here? No, it's a Goblin Big Boss. Uh, you know what? We can kill a Goblin Big Boss. You guys go kill the Goblin Big Boss. Why not? And turn off Guard Mode. You won't even need it. Alright, now they can do their own thing while you can be part of group one over here. Aha, we got more zombies on the field. Uh, lovely, you guys can spread out. And uh, we got our Sylvanian crossbows adding their firepower to everything. Let's set the zombies up in, let's say, group uh, four, three, there we go. And how far can the... T oh, wow, they can't shoot far at all, okay. Let's go like so, and then we'll send them all up the walls. Because if they if they die, we'll just get more casualties for more arrays dead, so none of that will matter. All right, and oh, it looks like our Vargeists have surrounded the enemy, uh, the enemy orb goblin big boss here, and I don't see him standing up to much of this. What are you guys doing now? They're just kind of like hovering over these goblin archers. Ha! Huh, that's kind of weird. I've never seen them do that before. They're not attacking them. They're sort of knocking them around. Okay, there we go. These two have now landed. Wow, these guys have completely surrounded him, haven't they? That's pretty funny. Uh, keep killing him, I guess. And then keep killing everything around you. I mean, honestly, I don't think anything up here is going to uh, be an issue for them. And, oh, what do we have here? More units moving in. Oh, some biggins. Hmm, maybe we'll have to turn on the biggins and actually... Oh, okay, this guy's gonna run away. Keep attacking him. But, uh, once again, I'm not seeing too much of a problem. Do we want to send the, uh, zombies at the walls? You know what? Why not? Go zombies. Ah, uh, wait, you know what? Uh, toggle guard mode off. And just, just in case it, uh, stops you from, uh doing stuff, and uh, we don't, or by doing stuff, I meant climbing the walls. All right, you guys keep attacking. Go for these, well, go for these biggins, I guess. They're right in the way. If you can't chase this guy down, especially. 
Oh, Vargeist. Yeah, this is why I didn't I didn't think that the cinematic battle was necessary because uh, well, the Vargeists are pretty cinematic when they uh, when they get up to their own thing anyway. And it's not like we need to control them. Yeah, I think the walls are too narrow. That's that's the problem with every unit trying to deal with Vargeists up here. They can't surround them, can't trap them, and therefore and also the uh, splash damage is really telling up here. <laughs> oh wow, okay, my you might get surrounded there, buddy. Uh, what are you doing? Well, that's probably not such a good idea, but hey, whatever. That's uh, all good. Uh, you guys, yeah, I'm sure you're fine. I'm sure you're fine. Ooh, there's trolls down there. We gotta be careful of those, though. They can definitely dish out damage to Vargeist, even even though I've been talking up the Vargeist this entire time. Uh, you know what? Let's get Group 1 out here as well. We'll probably start attacking them on the gate. So you guys move in right here. The Bat Hulk, you can start whacking away at that gate when you get there. You can also turn off the guard. Now let's also get our skeletons moving up. They don't need to be all the way close to the place, but they can start moving a little bit closer. Oh, wait, what the hell? What is this? Aren't our zombies all moving out there? Did I forget some zombies? Huh, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I don't know. Vargeist, ooh, one of you has taken a slight amount of damage. I don't like that. Who dares the damage of Vargeist? Yeah, it's probably this guy. Probably this idiot that jumped forward and then got stuck. Okay, you know what? You guys go through this blob and then move on to those Orc Error boys. Uh, you can probably protect this unit. Or maybe turn around and land on these orc boys. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Uh, more interspersed among the, uh, uh, well, battle line, since so far as you can call it one. <laughs> oh, damn, the bar guys are effective. Oh, you're hovering again, but I'm sure you're going to land soon, right, buddy? Guys, land. Land and attack, please. Uh, just attack. Just attack. You're good. You're good up here. Just don't go down there. Don't go down where the trolls are. Especially since the trolls can't climb. Alrighty, and we're getting some casualties, although not as many as I'd like. I don't want to move in. Ooh, you know what we can do, though? Uh, let's get a Wind of Death going. Why not? It's not going to do a crazy amount of damage, but... Oh, damn it. Like so. Did I overcast that? I think I did. Alright, let's see how many of these... Well, there are big ones in there, so it should be a decent amount of damage. And here we go, Wind of Death. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, this is such a brutal spell. It also clipped the uh, uh, clipped the trolls here, but it's not going to do that much damage. And plus, it's not like these are Throg's trolls. Man, we're calling the Throg campaign. The trolls got so ridiculously, obnoxiously overpowered with all their uh, like uh, gods' gifts in addition to the uh, uh, in addition to their general buffs. It was pretty ridiculous. All right, that was a nice one to death, though. Well done, Vlad. Uh, and no, the gates is still in the way. You guys can all. I hate I hate the way that. Uh, this behaves like you have to constantly keep you units actually manually moving towards the walls otherwise they don't actually climb them properly How are the vargeists and yeah, they're pretty much unharmed <laughs> oh vargeists why are you so good to me all right we could probably start moving you guys in as well the walls will probably be clear of towers any second now honestly if we take a few casualties from these guys it's not gonna matter that much uh, so as soon as the uh, uh, as soon as the Sylvanian crosswomen are behind, the rest of those units will go. And how are we over here? Okay, well, you know what? Time to attack the gate. Go for it. Go for it. We can also start summoning zombies in here if uh, any of our units break through, so it's not going to be a big deal anyway. Alright, Vargas, keep doing your thing. The thing that you do very, very well. Too well, perhaps. You are high level now, though. Ooh, ooh, no, 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 don't land out there. Don't land out there. No, 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 no. None of that, please. Uh, go after this unit of forest gobos. Yeah, there we go. Stay up here. If they all want to fight to zombies, I'm perfectly happy with that. And you guys starting to move in. Let's say about there. Vargeists, go. Uh, maybe should have landed them among the orc biggins instead. Hey, you know what? Land among those. Yeah, up here. Don't uh, don't go down there. Perfect. Oh, this guy's gonna get surrounded. Ah, but they're gonna take so much damage anyway, it's probably not gonna matter. Alright, how's the gate looking? That's probably gonna take a while to break through. Man, that Wind of Death really helped out. Okay, the Bounce of Power is now in our favor, which is nice, and there are plenty of zombies up here. Maybe not plenty, but... Although, it's pretty much always plenty of zombies, isn't it? Uh, start going up here, and then we'll start summoning soonish. Bar guy's still basically unharmed, and now the zombies are also distracting the enemy. Nice little wall fight we got going. Uh, oh, damn, the, uh, you're taking fire, eh? Okay, you know what, Vargas, you need to you need to get to work on this a little bit faster. I didn't expect the towers to actually focus the uh, Sylvanian crossbowmen, which they do appear to be doing. Kind of unfortunate. 
You know what, crossbows? I want both of you to move out here where the towers hopefully can't hit you. Like so. Uh, you guys could all just keep taking casualties, I don't care. I actually want you to take casualties, as I've said. And then we should probably start moving these zombies down there in a few seconds. Gate is almost done for. Ah, there we go, far guys have moved through. Now they'll kill all the biggins. With the help of the zombies, once again. They are such effective siege machines, man. <laughs> Why does this one keep jumping up and hovering like that? I guess there's not enough room even for the Vargeists here. Yeah, just stand in front of those towers, keep taking down. Oh, we've stopped taking damage here, it seems. Uh, Vargeists keep on pushing through, go for those orc biggins. Uh, how are we at the gate here? 74%, I think it's time for Vlad to start a uh, start his first summoning of his zombies. And then as soon as they're distracted, we'll get to, we'll get these zombies moving down as well. Ooh, and we're getting support fire from our Sylvanians, uh, or Sylvanian crossbowmen specifically as well. In fact, I'd like to move you guys something like so, so that you can have a better angle for fire. You guys move in, the gate is almost down. And Vargeists, how you doing? It's still full HP, essentially. <laughs> uh, what a wonderful unit. Alrighty, well, these guys are fighting the dead. Well, I guess they're, they're all fighting the dead. You know what I mean. <laughs> and summon another one right here, and then let's get, let's get those trolls. About to break through the gate. This ramshackle orc gate, honestly, it feels like this gate is, should be uh, should have been broken through by the Bat Hulk just by itself without anything else. And oh, look, they've got some uh, more orc biggins up there. Cute, cute, but we'll uh, send the start moving the zombies down. Alright, the far guys, how you doing? Hey, whoa, 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 what's all this not fighting? What are you doing? Go, go and kill this unit of biggins. Uh, none of you land down there? Now you're good. You're good. Oh, oh my lord, the ones that are falling off the walls. Uh, you are trying to land, I don't like that. Uh, you go over there and kill this unit against instead, though. While the other ones uh, deal with the ones up here. Yeah. Really am kind of wary of them uh, landing down there. Uh, ooh, we got a charge of work boar boys, but I wanted to kill those trolls so you guys go back in there. Just keep summoning dead. It's not like we're out of magic right now. There you go. There you go. Vargas, take care of this. And the walls are pretty much ours. Oh, more orc biggins. Cute. Very cute. Oh, look! The Svargeist has taken like 10% damage. I'm worried now. Alrighty. <laughs> ah. Triggering, triggering the orcs here. Alrighty, orc boar boys. Ooh, getting some support from the Sylvanians against them. Maybe turn you guys around so that you can get whoever the hell you want. You guys, you know, maybe even time to get off the walls and start uh, moving down there. More Vlad and co. are completely unharmed as well. Uh, go after those trolls who are basically routing right now and just keep summoning dead. Vlad, you got another summon in ya? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do, buddy. Vargeist, you good? I think they're good. We can get these, uh, get these zombies moving down as well. Start taking more casualties. Uh, balance of power is very, very much in our favor. Now, you know what, let's send one unit of Vargeist to deal with this, uh, unit of error boys that are up here. We could also probably send the Vargeist to, like, kill lords and stuff at this point if we really want to. Uh, Vladenko, looks like you've seen off the enemy, uh, the enemy trolls, and therefore, just keep moving. Everybody keep moving. Zombies surround this unit of biggins. Uh, we will, yeah, we're not even taking that many zombie casualties, to be honest. Yeah, you know what? We're probably not going to take as many casualties as we want. And yeah, we could use a spell, as somebody suggested in the previous comment, on our own zombies. Like, put them all in a line. And, uh, and use a wind of death on them, but at this point, meh. Honestly, the settlement only has like 4,000 defenders, as we can see. So, even if we were to lose like 2,000 units worth of zombies and skeletons, we'd still be only at about 6k, and that's just, uh, that's just not enough. And, oh, yeah, we can also start moving Skeleton Warriors in as well. Kind of forgot about that. Uh, you guys, what, what's down here? Boar, boar Boys? You can go get some Boar Boys, alright. Go for it. Right there. Land on that. And then you guys can, oh, hello. You know, of our Arrow Boys out there. Ah, uh, Pyrrhic victory. Pyrrhic victory, what the hell are you talking about, game? As I said, the, the game really does underestimate the uh, the sheer power of the Vargeists. And yeah, this I think this battle's almost over, in fact. They're probably gonna chain route soon. As soon as we can route these spider riders, they're just gonna the entire uh, 
blob is gonna route here. Send more zombies, and now we still have zombies moving up. Ah, uh, alrighty, Bad Hulk, lead the way. Oh, look at these brave, brave wolf riders charging right in to help the beleaguered boar boys. Kill them all, Vlad. Oh, and you know what? Might as well uh, use this Helm of, Helm of Discord on... Oh, are you guys standing in a blob here? Uh, this is not going to do too much damage at you, but it's not like we have too many more uses of, uh, well, anything left anymore. Ah, actually, that did pretty, pretty well. Will this bounce off? No, it won't. Oh, it will break down some of the walls. Huh, kind of neat. That's kind of neat. And with that, I believe the battle is ours, and it was a fairly easy one. Close victory. Sure. Sure, game. Sure. Close victory. If, if, if you like. We did manage to lose uh, 700 zombies that we sent up the walls and just didn't care about at all. Ah, you gotta love the undead hordes. Ooh, 600 kills on Vlad. He actually managed to beat the Vargeist with those winds of death. Uh, certainly it does uh, make it a worthwhile spell to get early on, even when you have access to Vargeist and none of our zombies even died. Man, uh, kind of tempted to just delete some of them. 4,000 money, not too bad though. And, oh yeah, now we have to decide, do we sack the place and gain another 4,000 money, or do we keep it? See, the thing is, on the one hand, Mount Gunbad is on the other side, so we would be able to, because they're a vassal, use the, uh, use the commandments as we please. On the other hand, there's no corruption here, and therefore, hmm, I don't know. Ultimately, I don't know. I don't really want Vlad back here uh, to... You know, let's just occupy it. Screw it. Screw it. Let's see what we get out of this. And hey, we kept a uh, we kept a corpse pound. What do we get here? Oh, we built corpse carts and, uh, and stuff. Doesn't really matter. Uh, you know what? You're going to untax yourself. I know you're making money, but that's fine. Uh, let's go growth and let's delete this. Minus one public order. Raise dead cost. Here, recruit plus one for... They recruit rank plus one for Banshees and White Kings. Oh, well, that's all swapped. You can't actually recruit things here. Uh, yeah, we are going to keep it around. We got about 4.4k. Nah, it's not enough. Maybe I should have... Yeah, I should have probably killed enough zombies to get at least 5k, but we're probably not going to be up here very often. And the reason I wanted to get this was, you know, if Mount Gunbad falls, then we could go here and then claim it for ourselves. Uh, also, Vlad, I believe we were going for a Lore Master of Vampires to increase uh, our use of various spells. You've also leveled up Dieter, and we were going to get you Curse of Undeath, Raise Dead, and then next up Flock of Doom and probably Dark Pact. Uh, otherwise... Do we really want you to keep this many zombies? I mean, if Vlad joins Isabella, he won't need any of the zombies at all. They are costing us 45... Well, they're not actually costing us all that much. You know what? Keep them for now, especially if you need to defend this place. Uh, you. I guess we should replace you with a growth building, even though you... Oh, you provide a crypt whore garrison. That's not bad. Oh, but your growth is so bad. Uh, let's see. If we replace you with a growth building, make an extra 30 growth per turn, you'd still take ages to upgrade to the next level. Oh, man. Like, 12 turns plus another 4 turns, so at least 16 turns. That's without the growth, that is. Wait, but the growth will increase with this, won't it? Yeah, it'll take effect next turn. Okay, so that'll be a little bit faster. Maybe we can keep this, but it's not generating that much money. You know what? Demolish it. Demolish it will replace it with either a money-making building or something, and then just untax and have Dieter von Karstein uh, deal with all this stuff. Alrighty, I'm happy with you guys. Uh, you, I'm not happy with, but we'll have to move out of here before we uh, strike back at Karak Dromar once again. Now, we do want to check what we've got to level up Nashrak's Slayer. Not worth it right now. Uh, Castle Templehof. I did say I wanted to get a couple of these Lich Yards. You know what? Let's get some Lich Yards. I was gonna, we were gonna replace them anyway. Ooh, wait, Eshin can replace the Lich Yard with, nah, but we need the growth more. I was gonna say build the wine thing here, but when we level up, we can build the wine here. Oh man, I don't want to do so many Lich Yards. Oh, you know what, let's leave Eshin alone. Yeah, because especially if it gets attacked by the uh, Ostermark forces, I don't want to deal with that. Unassigned skill point on Melissa Rotep. You know what, if we're gonna get attacked, let's... Let's forego this for now and get you Purple Son of Zareas and Fate of Buna. We were going to max those things out anyway because they're both awesome. Uh, we'll also max out Spirit Leech. The others are all fine, but uh, they're not as uh, high use case as uh, this stuff. Do they have any, like... Okay, they don't have any swords or anything. Well, I mean, they have, like, swordsmen, but they don't have great swords, if you know what I mean. Uh, you! You can also join Isabella. Why not? There you go. Enjoy. 
Man, I, I feel like they're gonna bypass Waldenhof and go to Eschen, but whatever. If we have to destroy them in, in the field, we'll uh, destroy them in the field. Ooh, and one of our research is almost finished. Oh, speaking of research, uh, we don't have a Lichyard anywhere yet, do we? No, I want to get a Necromancer just so that we can uh, we can start stealing tech, because we really, really need it. I I think the vam Vampire Crypts increase tech, right? Just want to double check here, because we really need that going faster. Uh, vampire Keep, Vampire's Lair. No, you do. You don't increase the research. What does? Okay, so it's this build. Oh, it's a necromancy tower. Okay, yeah, fair enough. It's only ten percent at level five, though. Huh. It's a little bit unfortunate. We're probably better off getting tech out of uh, actually stealing tech than any of this now. Yeah, five percent is just not enough. Okay. Okay, well, we'll deal with it. We'll deal with it. Let's end the turn. Let's. Oh, let's see who these guys attack. Moment of truth, I guess. At least it'll be a fun battle if uh, they attack uh, attack Isabella, or at least I think it'll be a fun battle. Kind of hard to say if they actually have the means to destroy uh, and destroy this army. I really doubt it. Yeah, Pyrrhic victory, which means it's going to be very much in our favor. Yeah, our army is so freaking mobile compared to theirs, especially with the nearly 100 speed on Isabella's... Uh, uh, on Isabella's dire doggos and uh, fell bats. So let's get to this. We're gonna do this cinematic style, obviously, because I feel like this will be a fun battle. Let's get to it. Alrighty, here we go. So they've got some relatively elite units, well, compared to some of the ones that uh, uh, that we faced before. Specifically, the outriders or the pistoliers, rather, uh, can be quite dangerous. But otherwise, we're just going to make use of our uh, our mobility to kill them. They do have a arch lector and a warrior priest here, which are going to be hard to take down because of all their armor, uh, as well as a reinforcing army with a general of the empire. And those guys do have mobility on their horses, but we should be out. Be able to out mobility them that's not a word uh you know what i mean uh so some setup is pretty simple this is our main battle line with zombies in front and the spearmen in the back and the uh, crypt horrors are using all of these undead as uh, as meat shields as well they should uh then we got on the sides we got lots of our crypt ghouls waiting to uh, flank the enemy and not get killed immediately and then of course our dire wolves and our bats waiting for the opportune moment to strike at the enemy ranged units here we go we are going to move our vampires in first, obviously, and I slowed it down slowly. Let's speed it back up to normal. They're going to move their pistoliers up. Makes sense. I'm going to harass with their range cav. And we're going to run our vampires right at them. The closer we get to the army, the uh, uh, the more likely we can summon dead right on top of them and maybe even get some nice casts of magic on. And let's see, they're probably going to fire at us. Yeah, oh, okay. And that was a pretty nice volley. Oh, yeah, look at that. A look at that. Nearly half HP from a single volley from both units. That's pretty damn scary. Uh, how quickly they can rip a vampire apart. And maybe it was a poor decision to send these guys up ahead. I feel like I overestimated, or rather underestimated, uh, the power of the Pistoliers. Alright, there we go. But over here, we're going to summon a purple son of Zereus right on top of the uh, of the enemy crossbows and swordsmen right here. It is a pretty decent spell uh, for uh, dishing out damage to chaff like this. So, yeah, I, I was trying to decide between Pit of Shades and the purple sun, but I figured uh, we'll try purple sun this time because we always use Pit of Shades. Why not? Plus it looks cool. Plus, we, uh, we leveled it up to the max, well, although, to be fair, the Pit of Shades is also leveled up to the max. And uh, there we go. It looks like they want to actually physically charge our vampires, which is not the worst thing in the world. Oh, and this one, uh, this one is going to manage to slay one of them, and they are going to keep going for Emmanuel Pause, and we're going to use our Invocation of the Heck on her to try to get the, uh, uh, to try to get her HP back up, as well as summon a unit of zombies to sort of cover her retreat, as uh, the other vampires can't, unfortunately, distract the enemy. Uh, while they are themselves being distracted by the pile of enemy pistoliers. And there we go. She is very... She's weak binding, so she's close to... Uh uh, she's close to the danger zone here, but we do get these summon of zombies in at the right time, and I think it holds back the rest of the army. So, uh, yeah. Uh, the enemy warrior priest is also going to try to bring her down, but uh, Isabella and I forget the name of the other vampire are going to counter this. Really got to remember to get some of the uh, names that have been suggested in here. 
Alrighty, here we go. Nice little duel with the enemy, a warrior priest who's already starting to take damage. And with that invocation of the heck, we're back up to half HP with uh, Emmanuel. And her binding is now, let's see. Wait, not Melissa. Melissa Rotep was the name of the other one. You are now in stable binding. Okay, perfect. And our army, our main army, is also almost here. Uh, our zombies and skeletons are going to get distracted by these spears. So once again, there's going to be some spear on spear action here, but that's just fine. Uh, we're meant to hold the line. Our ghouls are moving up. Our doggos have all now found... Well... Doggos and bats have all now found the enemy. They're moving around. They're getting ready to kill all those range units. Ooh, the dire pack is charging in and uh, hunting down those pistoliers as well. Oh, they're stopping a little bit too much. Considering they should technically be double uh, as fast as the enemy. Does anybody know, is there a hard limit on the max speed? Like, we have 200 speed on these guys. Is that actually the fastest that they can go? Is is that at all even the speed that they move? Or do they actually move slower? Like, there's a limit of 150 or 100 or I don't know. Something. Ha ha ha. I have no idea. I've never bothered to look into that because I've never had a unit that moved at 200 speed before. Uh, otherwise, let's see. Crypt Ghouls are in here and the uh, Direwolves are hitting the enemy uh, in the rear, which is lovely. The Empire Archers over here got caught by the Direwolves, uh, which is exactly what we wanted. The Reinforcing Army is trying to get to us, but they are relatively slow. Uh, let's see. We have units of enemy fell or Fandle fell bats. Uh, we have units of enemy crossbowmen all being routed either by fell bats or piles of ghouls. All the while, the main portion of the army uh, back battles the enemy, a lord, or lord and hero here, plus a few uh, swordsmen and all that stuff. Uh, these guys are also now getting surrounded by our crypt whores. Ah, but the arch elector and the warrior priest standing against the undead. This, uh, it's, it's everything they want, I'm sure. In a way, they probably asked for this. With all their hatred of the undead and all. And let's see how much damage they've taken here. You shouldn't have hated the undead. Uh, let's see what do we have here. I was about to say live by the undead, die by the undead, but that makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> Uh, alrighty, let's see what else do we have here. Empire archers are just about out of the picture, but we do have the swordsmen finally moving in to reinforce uh, the other swordsmen units, so we are going to have to get our dire doggos the heck out of there. Uh, the enemy pile of pistoliers has also been caught by a giant pile of our own fell bats, and I got annoyed by the fact that these... Uh, uh, the Dire Pack here was having a really tough time catching these Pistoliers. It looks like they sort of get uh, they sort of get bogged down attacking a couple of the enemy units as they get distracted. So it's prob this unit's probably not all that effective at uh, chasing units down like this, or specifically chasing down very fast units down like this. What you're probably better off doing, judging by the performance here, is uh, sending a bat to actually force the enemy into combat and then having the anti-large dire pack actually kill them. Because when they're just straight up running, it doesn't seem to work out that well. Uh, there's a unit that's basically running off the field, so are these pistoliers done? And yeah, we're definitely using our uh, range, superior, or range superiority, uh, mobility to our advantage. Speed superiority, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the enemy Arch Lector and the enemy Warrior Priest are also just about dead. Oh, damn it, I didn't mean to speed it up to max, my bad. My bad, and that uh, uh, that certainly saw the enemy uh, Hero and Lord rout in the few seconds that it was sped up. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, not a big deal, though. Yeah, and I think that's the last of their range units done for as well. Uh, we just have too many bats and too many dire wolves to take care of them, especially as the enemy is not uh, a boxing up to protect them, and therefore they're going to get isolated and ripped apart. Well done, ghouls. You probably shouldn't be fighting directly like this, but especially when you're uh, when you don't have the. Uh, the upgraded stats, but I think you'll do just fine. Enemy Lord should have fallen by now, or is about to fall. There he goes. Right at the time I uh, I mentioned it, and now it's time to kill off his Warrior Priest Disciple. Perhaps that Arch Elector... 
brought the uh, the warrior priest on purpose. Alright, I mean, it makes sense. Alrighty, what do we have here? We do still have a unit of spearmen alive and another unit of spearmen back here, but it does not really matter. With all their heroes dying and all their range units destroyed, the army losses should be about telling. The enemy are wavering, and I think the chain route is almost here, with the exception of that general of the empire and this uh, basically full HP unit of swordsmen. Ooh, and we're gonna get a rear charge into our flanking attack, I guess. Kinda hard to tell, they're all, they're like at a 45 degree angle. I wanna say flanking attack here by these, uh, by these crypt ghouls, ooh, but the zombies are very close to dying themselves, but these guys are shaken, and with the extra charge, I think their morale is gonna just suffer very badly. There we go. Hi, huh, it's not saying attacked in rear or, or attacked in flank, weirdly enough. Just, I mean, I guess it's not because it can't write anything else other than army losses, and not that it matters because the chain route is here, and, uh, and we've won. Very nice. Lovely little horde of undead that, uh, that wins not by virtue of numbers, but so much as by virtue of, uh, of speed. I like it. I like it. We're gonna be seeing a lot more of this out of Isabella as we build lots and lots of, uh, uh, lots and lots of speedy and flying units. Direwolves, Feldbats, Vargeists, uh, maybe a couple Terrorgeists, all that sort of thing, plus vampires on Hellsteed. So we'll have an incredibly mobile army, especially as we head into the mid to late game. And, you know, let's speed up the rest of this. We're obviously going to run down any troops and kill them as they attacked us, and therefore their army will be alive after this. So the more units we kill, the less units we'll have to deal with next turn. There we go. Get them, bats. The bats are hungry. Don't be selfish and die so that they can they can eat. Because I'm pretty sure fell bats are like crypt ghouls and are actually alive. They're not they're not rotting. Uh, they're not actually undead. Reasonably sure. Yeah, they look pretty alive. Uh, they're not, uh, they're not zombies. Alrighty, so yeah, let's speed it back up, kill the rest of these units. At least the Dire Pack is really quite good at obliterating units that run from it, which is interesting enough, especially considering those are infantry and not cav. Uh, they are meant to be anti-large, but there we go, a close victory apparently, but I think the only units we really lost were, uh, uh were relatively useless units, like zombies and stuff, and I don't think we actually lost any units. Let's just check. Alrighty, well, we certainly lost a couple units here and there, and I don't mean entire units, rather, uh, uh, some, taken some casualties, but otherwise it was a very easy battle. And uh, not even the basic zombies died, and, uh, to be honest, all of the casualties were pretty much, uh, to our, uh, uh, garrison, so, who gives a damn? Uh, did take a little bit of damage on Emmanuel Posner, I did jump the gun a little bit with, uh, uh, with getting her in there and getting a lot of damage out of those pistoliers, but hey, whatever, return those captives for even more cash, this guy's gonna survive, and then he's not gonna move away, oh good, well, then we'll, uh, kill him in the field, and maybe even immediately attack us, and after that, ooh, Tormentor Sword is valuable, hey, blood is power, so income from cities, and there we go, immediate dwarf spy, and I just want to double check this, so first of all, those guys are dead, but more importantly, yeah, okay, fine metalwork is at 14, or 13, rather, perfect. Perfect. Okay, so you can get the Dwarf Spy because the other one is with, uh, uh, is with Katrina. Katrina, you, unfortunately, I feel cannot attack right now. I feel like you'll, you'll, you'll lose a lot of your forces. Alright, you know what, let's get your Corpse Cart. Let's summon, let's say, I don't know, three more full units of zombies. And then let's bind these all zombies all together. Will this be enough? Hmm. With two corpse carts, it should be a lot stronger than it was before. I mean, you're gonna need more zombies eventually anyway, so we might as well... You know what? Here, have some more zombies. Uh, and then we'll get more corpse carts later if we can, um, if more come up. I mean, yes. this is a non-Balefire one, so technically another Balefire one should come up here eventually. Alright, attack this, please. Uh, we oh, this is gonna kill the tithe. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, man, not the tithe. Come on, they have a hundred units left. Do we care enough to back off? The thing is, if we back off, we'll just... Ah, we'll revive it in ten turns. You know what? Screw it, I don't care. Sorry, tithe. 
And we could have manually fought it as well. It's just not worth the time, in my opinion. There we go. Just keep. Hey, we got a razor standard out of it. Uh, that's worthwhile. Then you can go back here. All right. Sorry to a. Go into our territory. There we go. And then we'll revive the tithe in ten turns. And uh, we can always get the uh, feasters in the dark. Or Feasters in the dusk. Every time I see this unit, I say feasters in the dark, but uh, it's in the dusk, people. In the dusk. Uh, dark Pact is going to be real helpful, and I think that's what we go for next. Either that or Aura of Supremacy. Well, we are attacking, and this is only Aura effect, so yeah, let's do this, and this will help. It'll probably be counted in Auto Resolve. I'm not sure that Auto Resolve considers auras that are directly attached to characters, so I feel like uh, maybe that'll be the better option here. We're going to get a Charnel Pit to increase growth here, but uh, keep it on uh, uh, 265. Yeah, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. And oh, what do we have? Oh, this is actually interesting. He's going to take Mount Gunbat, isn't he? What if we march up here with Vlad right now and then immediately... Oh, wow, this force is actually not too bad. Mount Gunbat will keep walls as well, though. Okay, you know what? Since we're here and... Hmm... Wait, I'm just thinking, do we summon anything out of this uh, to help out with this? Well, we could probably use some more spears against this. And this is the... This is the Wa Force or the main army? Oh, the Wa Force is relatively small. I wonder what else is in there. Well, it's probably nothing the Vargeists can't deal with. Uh, you know what? I think we are going to summon some more units. Let's get two units of zombies. And do we really need more than two units of zombies, really? I don't want to. I don't want to spend too much money that we will not really need. And I would like Mount Gunbat because it'll make this entire province. And Mount Gunbat will be a lot easier to defend from rebellions as well. And then wait, will we still need the? Well, we won't need the corpse pile here at all, which we could then destroy if we succeed. Oh, I suppose this guy could fail at taking Mount Gun. No, he's not gonna fail. That force is trash. Uh, do we want a couple more spears? Or maybe warriors? Spears will hold the line longer. And really, we just need units to hold the line for the Vargeists. Alright, you know what? Do it. Do it. And then, Vlad, you are going to march stance all the way up to wherever you're not suffering attrition, which is... Wait, do you suffer attrition here? Yeah, you do. You do. Even in our, even in our allies' territory, but oh well. It's going to take a couple turns to get here, but... I'm hoping I'm not jumping the gun here, because these guys might actually just, like, jump down here and attack Dead Rock. No, they're friends. Uh, well, then I don't know. I know. Hello. It's Game and Rebels. You actually have a city here. That's cute. That's cute. We can actually take Desolation of Drakenmore if we really feel like it. Huh. If we were to attack this and take it, we could also take Dead Rock Gap all right. Well, we'll start with this. Uh, hopefully I don't... Hopefully I didn't, rather, miscalculate. Now you, Dieter, you will need to defend at Zuffbar, but you will also need to sack Kragmir. So get down there. This we're, we're still finding use for you, buddy. Uh, we also want to upgrade Waldenhof as fast as possible, but it's not ready yet. I also want to siege Essen. I have some nice forces in there, but uh, if we summon... Oh, wow, Isabella's got a lot of levels. Okay, I'll deal with that in a second. Yes. Uh, I just want to make sure that there's nothing else that we got to deal with right now, like uh, building anything here, but it doesn't look like it. Well, we got to get that Necromancer up and running. Uh, you know what? If that army is gone, I'm tempted to delete the Charnel Pit and replace it with the uh, money and public... No. The wine building, I mean. Uh, I think we'll be okay. Uh, you guys... What do we get, Isabella? We have Dark Pact. You know what? Let's get Wind of Death. Ooh, or Magical Reserves. I mean, the other two already have the magics that they could cast. Do we really need Wind of Death right now? We might not. You know what? Get Magical Reserves first. And then we'll uh, we'll figure out other stuff afterwards. Alrighty, that's good for you. Uh, you, you already have maxed out Purple Son of Zareus and the Fate of Biuna. So I guess we just go for Impassioned for now. I still haven't decided on this stuff. Uh, let's go for Impassioned. Or we go max out Spirit Leech. Ah, probably maxing out too many spells. We could also max out Retinue Valet. But uh, you know what, we'll, we'll think about that. It's The thing is, we're going to get Impassioned no matter what. So we might as well put points in it. Uh, and then, well, Occam's Mind Razor is also really, really quite good. Uh, but it's probably not worth it at this stage in the game. Later on, when magic starts to fall off by virtue of, of uh, units being so powerful, that's when buffs start uh, start being a lot better than like vortexes and stuff like that. 
that. So you know what? Let's get you impassioned as well, at least for now. And then you is this is your first level, Blade Master in training. Really, your only two options. At least you were that was easy. Uh, let's see. You are going to. I'm gonna recruit some ghouls, maybe. They're quite expensive. You can certainly avoid some zombies. Let's just do that. I would have liked to have. Ah, if we're gonna see. Ah, this is not enough, is it, to fight that army? I feel like it's not enough. It's like 77, eh? It depends on if we can force them into a siege or not. You know what? Let's get the let's get the feasters in the dusk here for now. We could fight them in the field, possibly. Attack this. We could raise dead again next turn. I want to uh, I want to siege their territory before they. Uh, uh, let's see, Winds of Magic or Fight. You know what? Murder captives this time instead of taking money. Uh, yeah, I want to... Oh, we can siege it right now. Oh, that's perfect. This guy was blocking the bridge. That's why we couldn't move there. Okay, okay, that's nice. Uh, you, you're gonna get... Well, I guess another point in Impassion. And then you... We gotta have to level up instead of uh, doing it between the episodes. Uh, because uh, we are gonna fight, possibly, next turn. And then you, I guess, are going to go into hard to hit. I mean, you're already pretty hard to hit, but you can get harder to hit. Can't be too hard to hit. Oh, oh whoa, 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 Drica, what the hell happened to you? Well, that's really unfortunate. Huh. I wonder if they... Does the AI do these randomly? <laughs> oh, man. I'm just looking at what uh, what she's got in her army. Oh, it would be disappointing if she dies here. Uh, she could also maybe attack Naganhof. No, she can't. Well, we'll see. We'll see. If the faction dies, it dies. There's not much we can do about that. Uh, we could summon... No, I don't, I don't want to spend any more money. Let's attack Essen while we're here, right? If we can draw them out into a nice field battle, I oh, there's another enemy army out there. Yeah, Pyrrhic victory, eh? Uh, if we force them into a fight... Hmm, we could even probably just straight up attack them. You know what, I'll think about it. Let's build some of this stuff now. We don't actually need to assault the walls, although with the bats at their current level, might be decent, uh, but then the but then the outriders might be an issue. You know what, stay here for now. Stay here for now. We'll see if they start building an army up in, at uh, Nagenhof, and I do expect that they will. Oh, there's a witch hunter no, here, though. No. Uh, he could uh, block. Well, blocking our army doesn't matter, but the assassinate very well might. Like, uh, Reynold Gorst is, uh, is low level, but whatever. Whatever. Ooh, research, research. Now, we have various things that we wanted to do. Definitely want to get the Blasphemous Bestiary uh, to increase the power of the Felbats and Direwolves. We did also want Baleful Rituals. You know what? Let's go Baleful Rituals first, then we'll move through uh, Blasphemous Bestiary to Master of the Swarm. And we also want to get Master of the Putrid Horde as fast as possible. Yeah, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of really good stuff in the early uh, stages, but damn, the research is low. It takes a while to get going with the vampires. Uh, alrighty, let's see. Is there anything that we want to upgrade in terms of buildings? We don't have a lot of money to use. And, oh, we also gotta remember the Karakadrin will rebel again. And most of our money is just coming from our main two provinces, which, fair enough, does uh, uh, is pretty usual. Can't upgrade anything here. I'd love to upgrade the Lichyard, but I don't think it's necessary at this point. Waldenhof will be making more money as we get there. Castle Drakenhof, how far are you? Oh, you're really far from the upgrade. All right, let's end the turn. Let's see how this works out. We could really use another gold mine. I, I I want the dwarves to lose this territory. Vlad's got it. I believe in Vlad. And, okay, they've sieged it. So we move up closer. We go into ambush. And we hope that they succeed. Oh, what if they sack it? What if we moved out here for nothing? Oh, they are going to fight in the field. Alrighty, well, we can certainly do a field battle. It'll be a little bit risky because their army is uh, a little bit more elite than last time. And we don't have the garrison to rely upon, but we do have a lot of magics uh, to draw upon. So I think we can pull it off. However, we will have to do a... Uh, uh, a cut here because the last battle was a cinematic battle and I'm guessing this one should be one as well At least Isabel is having a fun time, but anyway, uh, let's get that. Uh, let's get that cut going Alrighty, there it is and let's get to it I do imagine this will be a fun battle as we will have to be fairly careful careful Definitely not going to underestimate uh, the power of the handgunners and the outriders and uh, their ability to bring down vampires quickly So let's get to it
Alrighty, second go. Once again, they dare to challenge Isabella's army, and we will once again rip them apart with the uh, uh, with the much quicker units. Now they do have what three units of uh, outriders this time, or is it? Uh one unit of outriders and two units of pistoliers. Yeah, so that's a little bit annoying. They also do have a mortar available, but that's why we started our army all the way back here. Uh, we are able to hide behind this hill here so they can't see us. I mostly just wanted to move the vampires close enough to summon some dead and draw the enemy forward. I love the idea of the vampires just standing there while the uh, uh, mortars sort of drop and just like not even flinching. Alrighty, and there we go. We now have the undead some or the uh, zombie summon. The reason for this was essentially, as I said, to draw the army forward and away from the enemy units of mortars. This is why we have the dire pack back here, which we are going to move in, and we are also having the uh, feasters in the dusk. Uh, wait, <laughs> I mean I got it right. Uh, wait to attack whatever is exposed. We also have magics available to us but for now we should just be able to move the rest of the army up yeah. and that is a lot of uh, a lot of hand gunners that are standing close together they really shouldn't be doing that if they don't want to get a pit of shades or something cast right on top of them and uh, yeah the zombies are doing a great job absorbing a lot of fire from the uh, outriders and pistoliers and all these crossbows they gotta love a zombies and let's get another zombie unit out there. And there we go. Our dire pack is in. They did unfortunately get immediately charged by their empire captain. And the great swords are also going to try to chase them around. But hopefully they will at least kick the mortars off of the enemy. Uh, or rather kick the crew off the mortars so that they don't fire while the rest of our army uh, moves up. As for their They're army. Down, they are casting spells. Or at least they should be. There we go. It was almost perfectly time. Alrighty, Pit of Shades dropping in among them, and this should do a decent amount of damage. I couldn't decide whether we use Pit of Shades on the on the gunners here, or a uh, Penumbral Pendulum, and uh, or a, uh, uh, not a Fate of Buna, but a Purple Sun of Zoraeus, and at the end of the day, I still don't know what was the better option. Uh, I feel like the Purple Sun would have done more damage, because the, uh, the Pit of Shades is armor-piercing at the first cast and uh, we probably could have done more damage with an well a with an overcast bit of shades but b with uh, one of the other spells that does less damage uh, that's armor piercing but more damage overall now we are going to run our dire pack away and uh, lead the great swords away from those damn mortars the mortars did survive but we once again do still have those feasters in the dust waiting for the uh, for the great swords to get away our uh, zombie forces are getting ripped apart here but they are just summoned zombies and they're doing a great job distracting the enemy as they should be uh, fortunately the rest of our army is almost here they're slowly cresting that hill and they're coming in to support the vampires who in the meantime are just flipping around, uh, doing fancy moves and killing halberdiers and and swordsmen. Damn! The animations, though. You, got, you gotta kill them really fancily. You can't just you can't just rip their heads off because they're because uh, they're much weaker than you. Like, what is this? <laughs> Oh, they're just showing off now. Uh, alrighty, so uh, yeah, I, I never even noticed this, even though it's uh, several episodes in now. Gotta watch the vampires fight more often, it's pretty awesome. Uh, alrighty, so there we go, the dire pack ran around, the uh, greatswords charged the uh, uh, mortars again, and then so did the feasters in the dusk. Meanwhile, the dire pack then decided to follow out their unit of outriders, which is pretty darn scary, and uh, we gotta make sure that it kills them. It does run them right into the trees where they will hopefully uh, uh, get slowed down and all that sort of stuff. We also got the two units of fell bats here who have managed to catch the enemy units of pistoliers, and then the same thing going on over here. Here where they trapped this other unit of pistoliers right against the unit of zombies and skeleton spearmen. So these worked out fairly well. Once again, our dog. Damn it, did I speed it up again? Save us! Clicking the wrong, uh, the wrong key. And the bats always freak me out because their wings move really fast, and sometimes it feels like the game is sped up even when it isn't, uh, just because of how fast their uh, wings move. Oh, I'm right, and you, our uh, our white king, this is your first fight. Look at them all ineffectually uh, stabbing at you. Good luck with that. Truly, I do wish you luck. Mercy on us all. 
And we are going to... I don't even know what... Why? Oh, you're casting something. You're casting a Pit of Shades again uh, right over here on the Halberdiers. The Halberdiers do have 45 armor. But they're also blobbed up really nicely. And I didn't want to send a Purple Sun where it would uh, destroy all of the zombies and thereby prevent the enemy units from... Uh, uh, well, they're currently preventing the enemy units from joining the fray there. Alright, yeah, this is looking... Yeah, this is doing great damage. It basically killed this unit of halberdiers. They were uh, bunched up way too much, and though it did appear to cripple our uh, poor zombie's morale, that was more than worthwhile, and it uh, badly damaged the other unit of halberdiers. In the meantime, the mortars look to be off the field. The dire pack has chased off or otherwise killed the outrider unit, and the bats have done pretty much the same thing to both units of pistoliers, so I'm pretty happy with that one. The feasters in the dusk have also charged the enemy units of hand gunners, which moved away to try to either attack the dire pack or the feasters in the dusk themselves, and uh, are going to charge them, but then are going to get charged in the back by the uh, uh, by the great swords. Oh, right! And I forgot how these uh, these guys have a really cool, uh, really nice model. They're like uh, they're not green like the other. Wow, they run really fast. Uh, they're not green like the other uh, crypt ghouls. Yeah, they're blue. Da ba dee da ba da. Alrighty. Ah. <laughs> uh. I'm an idiot. Uh, let's see. We've got crossbowmen dying all over the place. The bats are doing their job now that they've mostly damaged or otherwise chased off the enemy uh, uh, outriders or pistoliers. They are uh, able to focus their damage on the enemy. Uh, uh, on the enemy crossbows, the great swords have not committed to the battle this entire battle. They're still chasing around uh, the feasters in the dusk, and though they've done about half damage to them, as long as these guys keep running, there's no way that the great swords can catch them because they're just way too slow. So we can keep ripping apart their uh, melee lines, keep their great swords, their most elite units distracted, while our vampire uh, heroes and lords, and plus our uh, white king, who I guess is the odd man, uh, odd man out, uh, can just keep killing the halberdiers who can't really kill them themselves and keep recharging their magic again I guess Alright, looks like this portion of the battle is just about ours. We are still chasing off a lot of the enemy uh, range units, but it looks like most of their crossbowmen and uh, and their uh, hand gunners and outriders and stuff are just about either dead or about to be. So we're pretty good there. Now we have the enemy great swords who we are going to move in and attack in addition to the enemy lord that's out here. Are you guys all attacking one greatsword? Two greatswords. That's a really nice animation. of the flip. But I feel like they should have added another animation where they just sort of like... Swing and just like take a head off or take a limb off with like one of their... Uh, with like a claw, not with a sword. Because vampires are extremely so strong, and there we go. The first cast. Ooh, that was a nice. Uh, that was a nice animation while casting. There, the first cast of the fate of Biuna going on to the great swords. I believe should be coming up right now. And there we go. Now that's going to significantly debilitate them and get stronger the longer they fight. So the vampires uh, are in here, and I did want to protect them from getting that uh, armor-piercing damage from those great swords. They should be able to kill them all the while also focusing down that Empire Captain. Good luck, Empire Captain. All the while, they keep all these elite units tied up, and oh yeah, the uh, great swords are taking quite a bit of damage, probably in part to the fate of Buna actually dishing it out. Uh, but uh, uh, the vampires doing splash damage as well. They do have, however, imperial tactics to partially counter the fate of Buna, at least with regards to their melee defense. But fortunately, does not provide an attack bonus. They're currently at only an 18 melee attack, which is, I think, pretty darn swell. Uh, otherwise, I think the rest of the army is just about done. There's this outrider unit out here. And I think that's it. Yeah, I think we're just chasing off damaged units now. Beautiful. So now we just have to focus... Oh, no, there... Yeah, it's... Oh, wait, we already saw that one. Uh, I saw the same Outrider, and then I was like, oh, wait, another one. Lovely. So this is the, uh, the Wrath of the Vampires here. The gods have indeed abandoned you. Sigmar was not with you to ward off the undead. And uh, and the ladies just obliterated this unit of great swords with that fate of you. Know, oh, it didn't even go to max level either. The entire army just decided to rout. And the enemy lord is going to get chased down. Dire pack is going to help with this a little bit. Oh, the dire pack has enough mass to knock down a vampire captain. Or a vampire captain. A empire captain? That's pretty good. 
That's pretty good. And our lord should have a decent time being able to chase them down as they do run much faster uh, than regular humans, right? Because these guys should be at about 30 movement speed. Yeah, 35. And versus the 60 of the vampires. Yeah, so good luck getting away from that. Similarly, the vet dire pack is going to chase down all these great swords. They still have that fate of Buna on them. Ooh, their melee defense is down to 9 and 9 uh, with the fate of Buna and them routing. That's beautiful. So they're going to get ripped apart like this and we're going to speed it up as we chase them off. Another victory for Isabella. The Ostermarks certainly picked the uh, uh, the wrong time to attack. Lovely. And I like that Isabella's doing her own thing for uh, for this portion of the uh, early game, while Vlad is also doing his own thing. Because I guess when you when you use them together all the time at the start, you really have a limited area where you can actually commit forces, as you do have to pay for two armies, but can only be in one location at a time. And uh, yeah, Isabella's been doing pretty good considering she doesn't really have an army. It's just the three, uh, it's just the three three vampire ladies and the four bats and the one direwolf. Really, we really need to get some more. I think we gotta remember to take them back to Castle Templehof, where we saw before that we can raise up direwolves and bats. Uh, we can also build bats there, technically, but I'm thinking that we get rid of that structure. But anyway, uh, that's enough of that. Let's see how much damage we did, but more importantly, let's... Uh well, let's see if we should take... Yeah, now we really gotta think about whether we should take this place or sack it or something. Hmm. Give us some thought. Alrighty, once again that went reasonably well, although I would say that we didn't get a crazy amount of value out of our magic in terms of uh, uh, and kills or damage. I mean, 30k is not bad, but Emmanuel has gotten way better than that prior. Uh, definitely got a crazy amount of value out of our bats and our doggos, though. Uh, possibly the Feasters in the Dusk as well, although a lot of the damage on all of these units was obviously chasing around enemies, and it's hard to say uh, what came from outright killing. Uh, let's see. What do we have here? Well, we could return the captives and get another decent amount of change, which we do need. Or we could heal up the... Oh, honestly, healing up the army barely gives us anything. All right, fine. Return the captives yet again. And we are still sieging this place. We got ourselves a nice free, uh, uh, free rank up. And let's see, you're not going to attack this, eh? Uh, income from post-battle loot from, for Isabella. We got a scroll for... Ah, Wargrove of Woe has been destroyed. Damn it, I really wanted to ally with, uh, uh, with Draika. Oh, well. It would have been a cool idea. No matter if it, did, but if it can't happen, it can't happen. And now, oh, you're immediately going to start rebuilding your stuff, but you've lost your... Uh, you've lost Essen, which is... Well, it's not your capital. I'm actually not sure whether we should take it or not. Hmm... Sack value is 7.2k, and the reason I'm not sure was whether that whether we should take it or not is because it'll be difficult to defend, and uh, there is no corruption there as yet. Uh, we do have the money to start building Balefire Braziers, but because of the current uh, state of our growth, it's definitely going to be an issue. And, but I think that's something we're going to have to figure out next time as we are this time out of time. Uh, so next time... <laughs> that was a very weird phrase or a couple sentences. Uh, so next time, we are going to hopefully move up Vlad and ambush this. I'm thinking that Mount Gunbad will fall, and then we immediately take it and grab this free gold mine for ourselves. Unfortunately, I believe the enemy will take it down to level 1, uh, which means the gold mine will be destroyed, which is really unfortunate fortunate because we could be getting a crazy amount of uh, uh, of additional gold. I mean, just look at how much money we're making out of Castle Drakenhof, and it only has one gold mine. Although, it don't, the, the gold mine itself is only responsible for 500 of that, to be fair. A lot of that is also peasant blood taxes, but nonetheless... Definitely something we want sooner rather than later, and plus it'll prevent enemy rebellions at Grom Peak, although it will mean that we'll essentially have to sit a unit here, well, or a, uh, a lord here. I'll think about doing that in some way. Uh, I haven't figured out what we want to do with that yet, but if we share borders with, uh, uh, with these guys... It might not be too bad. It really depends on how... Yeah, I mean, Grimgore looks pretty strong. Even though, Oh, wow, he only has four settlements. Then why is he so strong? It's probably because of this army and the... Wa Ooh, there's a bunch of battle markers here. I wonder how big. Eh, not that big. I was hoping that we'd find, like, a 10,000-point battle marker. Just send a, like, a, a lonely lord out there to, you know, get a full free army and then just book it down to Nagashazar. I still plan to do that. Uh, I do want to send a lord down to Nagashazar, but obviously we can't afford it right now. Anyway, I'm rambling. Uh, time is up. We're going to have to take 
over Ostermark next time or otherwise sack it. Haven't decided yet. I'll think about that. And then uh, we'll deal with the orcs hopefully at Mount Gunbat as well and keep sacking Clan Ferric until, well, forever. <laughs> until an enemy army moves up and decides to take it for themselves. That's basically until when we keep sacking Clan Ferric because it is free money and free XP. But anyway, uh, whatever I usually say about likes and comments, don't forget to leave them. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.